Okay, so hi guys, welcome back to the next video in our tutorial on RabbitMQ. In our previous video, we gave a quick conceptual overview of the pub sub pattern and how it is achieved in RabbitMQ. In this video, we're going to look at a code example of actually implementing the pub sub pattern using RabbitMQ. So we're again here in Visual Studio Code using Python in this video, but if you're more interested in C -sharp and .NET, please check out the next video where we will do the same thing with the pub sub pattern, but using C -sharp. So I've created three files here, and as usual, all the code will be available on my GitHub with the link in the description. The three files are producer pi, first consumer pi, and second consumer pi. So we're gonna have two consumers here and a single producer. The code so far is from our very first initial example with RabbitMQ, where we just simply published a single message to the default exchange and onto a single queue. So we're gonna alter this code slightly to use the pub sub pattern. So again, like in the competing consumers pattern, most of the code will stay the same around our connection and the creation of our channel. One thing that we're not going to have to do in our producer is declare a queue. So the producer won't be responsible for declaring queues. This is because each consumer will have its own dedicated queue, which it will create itself. The producer won't have any knowledge of how many queues it will need. All the producer will do will publish its methods onto the broker. So we can get rid of line nine here where we actually declare our letterbox queue. But one thing we will need to declare is an exchange and we'll need to declare a fan out exchange like we went over in the conceptual overview. So to do that, we need to do channel dot exchange declare. And we can give our exchange a name in this case we'll just simply call it pub sub and we need to give it the exchange type so the exchange type we want as discussed in the previous video is exchange type fan out so exchange type fan out and that's added our using up here so from pk exchange type import exchange type so now that we've declared our exchange and created our channel we'll just set a message so hello this is my first message we'll just simply change that hello I want to broadcast this message and then we want to publish it. So in this case, we don't want to publish it using the routing key to get it to this queue. We just want to publish it simply to our PubSub exchange. So the same way, but we replace our routing key with an exchange of PubSub. So the ex same exchange name in our declare and we just pass the body as usual. So that's it, pretty simple changes in our producer just to remove the declaration of an cube and replace it with the declaration of an exchange and then just changing the simple basic publish method to publish to that exchange. So let's look at how we want to change our consumer. So as I said, we have two consumers. So this is our very first consumer. And what we're gonna do first is we're gonna change our on message received method here. And we're just gonna say the name of the service that is consuming the message. So first consumer and then received new message. So this will just give us a visual indication on which service is consuming our messages. And again, the connection parameters, connection and channel declare stuff is all the exact same. We also wanna declare our exchange here in our consumer. That's just because if we start our consumer before our producer, we want the first thing to start to actually declare the exchange. It's again, it's an item potent operation. So if the exchange already exists, we won't get any errors. It will just do nothing. So we wanna say channel, and it's actually the exact same as our producers. So we can just copy that code in here to declare the exchange. Again, the exchange name is the same, pub sub. And we also just want to copy in the top bit here. So we have the fan out exchange. And we do in fact want to declare a queue on our consumer. So each consumer should have its own dedicated queue so we want to declare a queue here. And because it needs its own dedicated queue, we can't simply use the same queue. So to do this, we simply provide an empty string in the queue name, and this will let the server choose a random queue name for us. And we can save that queue it creates in a variable called queue. We also wanna pass the exclusive equals true flag when declaring the queue. So this tells the broker that once the consumer connection is closed, the queue can be deleted. And we'll talk more about these various different flags that exist in RabbitMQ in a future video. So not just the exclusive flag, but also other different flags that can be set when both declaring queues and declaring exchanges. 
So now that we have our queue and our exchange declared, we actually want to bind our queue to our exchange. So to do that, we again use the channel class and we say queue bind. And we have to give it the name of the exchange we want to bind to. And that's pub sub. And then also the name of the queue. So in this case, we actually don't know the name of the queue explicitly. It's stored in this variable here. So we say queue dot method dot queue to get the queue name. So now we have our exchange, our queue declared, and also our queue binded to our exchange. And then we want to start our basic consume. So the letterbox queue is no longer the queue we want to consume from. It is this queue here. So queue method queue. In this case, we can leave the auto acknowledge set to true. You can manually acknowledge them in the on message receipt if you want, but in this example, it's not really necessary. And that's basically it for our consumer code. We've declared our exchange or queue, we bind them together and we're consuming off the correct queue here. So let's open a couple of terminals and test out our code. So let's open one terminal and start our first consumer. And actually before we do that, we wanna just copy this code into our second consumer. And we'll just change the name in the on message received to second consumer. So let's start our first consumer. So Python first consumer start consuming there. Let's open another terminal window and start our second consumer. So our second consumer should start it. And then finally, let's start our Python producer.py. And we've sent a message in saying, hello, I want to broadcast this message. And we can see that the second consumer has received that, hello, I want to broadcast this message message and also has the first consumer. If say in our first consumer, if we did not bind the exchange to the queue, so we comment that out in the first consumer, we can go back and restart the first consumer. And again, if we publish a message from our producer using Python and run the producer code, we'll send a message, hello, I want to broadcast this message. We can see that the first consumer hasn't got it because we haven't got the queue binded to the exchange while the second consumer still has the binding, so it receives that message. So I hope this and the previous conceptual overview of the pub sub pattern has given you both a good idea of how the pub sub pattern works and what it aims to achieve, as well as some insight into how to implement it in Python. The next video, we'll look at how to implement it in .NET, and in the upcoming videos, we'll look at some more interesting patterns in RabbitMQ. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel.